Hi, my name is Leia, and I'm here today to answer a few questions. So the first one is, how long have you been teaching yoga? Six years already. Crazy, it goes by really fast. Where did you do your teach yoga teacher training? So I did two trainings at Luna. Um, back then they had an advanced teacher training, which I really loved. And just last year I did my Jiva Mukti teacher training as well. Third question. Where have you taught yoga? So I started teaching at my workplace while I was working at the Douglas Hospital and also at my local community center. Whatever subbing I could do, I was there and I would do it. Um, then I moved to New Brunswick for a short time and over there I taught at the YMCA and I also taught at Moksha. I would just sub um, classes here and there as well. And since I moved back to Montreal, uh, I've been teaching at Luna, but I've also taught some prenatal and postnatal uh, yoga online. Uh, what else have I done with my teacher training? So I've given some special classes or workshops around areas that I kind of specialize in. So that would be assists or uh, mental health. I've also given some uh, like karma classes to raise funds for causes that are close to my heart. So these are really nice to do because you feel like you're you're giving back in a way. Uh, what else have I done? Oh yeah, in a non-yoga um, setting, I've given presentations about uh, more work-life balance and uh, how to use certain tools to achieve a better balance or kind of have a better better life, better quality of life in a way, uh, including mindfulness, for example. Um, oh yeah, and for the last uh, for the last two years, I've had the opportunity to be part of the Luna Yoga Teacher Training faculty. So, being able to teach um, teachers to be. Uh, and which which has been super fun and has really helped me grow personally as well as a as a teacher but also as a student because you know I have to really go deep into certain topics to be able to explain them really well do I have other work yes so I am actually a full-time PhD candidate at McGill University in the mental health program. Um, a little bit of my, about my research, so I focus on school bullying and mental health in adolescence. I look at our or different kind of genetic, genetic composition or other environmental factors that will um, influence the association between bullying and mental health. Does being a yoga teacher and PhD student have anything in common? Well, definitely. So there is that mental health aspect in common in the sense that, you know, in both fields, we look at tools that we can use to promote mental health. Um, cause we know that Life is going to throw us curveballs, I think that's the expression, and so it's kind of, um, yeah, both fields deal with how, how we're going to deal with, with these life events or these various things. Um, so there's, there's that huge overlap, definitely. Um, but apart from that, I think that there's other things, uh, an, another overlap in the sense that I use my knowledge acquired through yoga in my day-to-day -day life or in my work life. So for example, really keeping the intent of compassion and mindfulness in everything that I do, whether it's on the mat or in front of my computer, answering emails, uh, at a conference, giving feedback to colleagues, I always try to keep that intention uh, close to my heart so that it comes through as I'm interacting with other people. And then there's the other way around too. So my experience as a researcher, as a scientist, kind of allows me to see yoga through that lens, which is really interesting, especially nowadays, because there's so much research on yoga. There's so much research on meditation. So as a scientist, it's such a pleasure to be able to, um, to look at yoga through in, in that way. Um, yeah, <laughs> so there's, there's all that overlap there. So I think that they do 
complement each other really well. And I would say that that's probably the case for other work as well, where, you know, I think you can bring things you learn through yoga through many, many other fields. Okay, next question is, how do I balance both? That's a good question because on the one hand, being a teacher does take more time um, in the week. You know, you have to, I plan my classes, I think about my classes, um, but the time that it takes in my week makes my week busier, but then again, it allows me to also keep a consistent practice to ground myself so to also think about other things than work or house stuff or you know whatever occupies my mind um so it's a it really complements again it really complements other areas of my life even if it does make me a little bit busier than i would be if i wasn't also a, a yoga teacher so overall you know how do i balance both i think they both kind of complement each other so well that I manage I manage to keep a work-life balance um, in in that sense and I don't really see yoga as work that's another thing too so for me yoga doesn't really count as as work um, and it does serve as a reminder in my own life to always to take care of myself to listen to myself to listen to my mind and my body so yeah all right, last one. So do I see myself doing both for the next 10 years? So eventually I will graduate from my PhD. Uh, but in the sense that, yeah, I see myself doing both. I see myself being a researcher, being a scientist and being a, a yoga teacher. Yes, for the next 10 years. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, beyond this, I feel like yoga is really a way of life. Uh, you know, as I was taking, you know, more challenging yoga classes before my pregnancy than my own life was uh, influenced my yoga practice. So then I was taking prenatal, then I was taking po postnatal yoga class. And I certainly see myself taking senior yoga classes or teaching senior yoga classes um, decades from now, for sure. So um, I do see myself doing both. Personally, I wouldn't commit to uh, doing it uh, to only teaching yoga, for example. I'll always remember in my Jivamukti teacher training, someone said that one of the teachers there, the mentor said that um, it's in a way, it's also encouraged not to make yoga your, your sole um, income because then you become financially dependent on being able to teach yoga. And that does have its uh, challenges attached to it. Personally, I do like uh, I do like not having that being my main source of income for sure because then for me I, I really just do it because it's a it's a passion. Um, but also you could argue and uh, one trainee mentioned this year that um, I think it was Laura Audrey who mentioned that uh, if you do make it your your full occupation, your full-time occupation, it does give you the opportunity to um, to dive deep into it. And I mean, I definitely agree. And it, it, it does provide that that amazing opportunity as well. So I think it really depends on, you know, who, who you are and what you're looking for. And yeah, that's it. If you have any more questions, don't hesitate to send them my way. And with that, I wish you... All the best. Take care.